Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time. One back with the one and only Anna Kelly. How you doing, Anna? I'm great. Good to be with you today. So we are going to talk about Redfin. Redfin now has followed Zillow out of the business of being an iBuyer. Uh, in addition to closing down their iBuying program, they've announced 13% layoff. Uh, so Anna, I just want to ask you about the iBuying, I don't know, business model thoughts. Obviously, it's it's proven to be a great way to lose money, but uh, what did you think about the <laughs> iBuying business model? You know, a couple of years ago, it looked like they were pretty smart, right? Real estate's going up in value. Um, they have a pretty low basis on some things that they were buying. You know, the market continued to go up. And at the end, the market really um, helps a lot of people that are even not doing things great or don't have a, a great prediction. And then when the market change, changes quickly, like it has as the Fed is raising rates, suddenly their whole model doesn't work anymore. And so one of the things that it'd be interesting, because I don't know the answer to this, but for Redfin in particular, most iBuyers are funded by very large funds. And what's happening is the funds and the credit markets are drying up because they can't sell the loans. And so just like if we're buying houses with non-QM lenders, multiple non-QM lenders are going out of business. Uh, we're developing large multifamily. We're borrowing for large multifamily. The lenders are drying up because they cannot sell the loans. They can't sell the mortgages. And so I suspect that not only are the iBuyers hit because values are potentially coming down, right? There's a crash in transactions. They don't have all the buyers that they were hoping to sell to. So the buyers aren't able to get loans, but they're not able to get the loans to purchase the properties at a discount either. Because I think, Michael, if they could, they would say, hey, we're staying in business. We might take some losses on the ones that we bought high. But when things crash, as I think they see is going to happen, they'd say, we have liquidity, we'll scoop up a whole lot more and we'll ride up the next expansion. They're not doing it because they can't get the loans, in my opinion. Yeah, the good news about having a YouTube channel is I have receipts, as they say, right? I have past videos calling out these bogus models. Yeah. And it was about a year ago or 18 months ago, um, I, I have a video talking about art, artificial intelligence being this amazing thing, uh, but being over leveraged in a business, i.e. single family homes, it doesn't make sense. Right. So, um, and I say that as someone who sold artificial intelligence software, understands it at a better than average level. Better than and, oh, I by do. the way, yeah. Oh, by the way, I've done real estate for 20 years and flipped 50 homes, all of them profitably. Right. All of them, not lost money. Now, some I made a little, others I made a lot, but never you lost. You beat money. me too. I lost money on my first one, big time. Yeah. <laughs> I still so, did it again. But... <laughs> there, so, I again, I have receipts. I can. I need to go find this video. It's like artificial intelligence has its place, and it will be game changing in lots of areas. But it's not in single family homes. The fact that Zillow and Red Redfin and Open Door think they can create an AI model that goes in and tells them what houses to buy and not is a fool's errand because yeah. you have to go through homes. You have right. to walk through them. They're all okay. not the same, right? I have seen housings listed this, that, the other, that the, that artificial intelligent will think is real. It's not real. Oh, by the way, okay. there's, it says it's a three, two. Did you know it's really only a three, one? Did you, you know, Absolutely. it's a, it's a, it's a two, one. Did you actually know it's a four, two? I mean, did you know there's a power line on the property? Did you know there's a billboard in the backyard? I mean, there's right. artificial intelligence. Real estate is something you have to get in, feel, touch. And it is, it is, um, it's not for some AI formula. Right. Absolutely. To your point, there were there were homes being bought by iBuyers above asking that were junkers, right? And and if just like if you go to Zillow, right? So Zillow has this estimate that many people were using, right? Or even um, drive-by appraisals, automated appraisals. You know, you have in, in small towns where the whole town is in one zip code, they basically think the whole zip code, every three, two, this many square feet, the same thing, right? We have condos and townhouses one street over that are worth half of what a single family home is a street away, Right. Systems don't know that. And so, yes, I think a lot of the data can't per, can't see the details of the house, but they don't also can't project in real time what's ha happening in that particular housing market. Um, and, and there's just been rapid changes that they could not have estimated. So not only does it not surprise me that they've lost a ton of money, but I I'm a little surprised that they're completely 
shutting down. I think that probably has to do with, you know, to your point, they had a bad model, they realized it, but I, I think they can't borrow money. I think you're right. Yeah. I think, I think that's, that's ultimately when the oxygen gets turned off, they, they just, they have to stop. Right. The reason I knew the reason I knew this model was going to be busted is because I, I buyers dominate certain markets. I happen to have relationships in Phoenix, Arizona, and it was about eighteen months ago. It might have been two years now. I was on a call with several wholesalers, and all of them, like five or six of them, were laughing at I buyers because all they would do is they found out what they were buying, they would market to these houses, they would pay retail, retail. Yeah. And then they would sell them to the I buyers for a fifteen to twenty percent profit because they knew their models were um, inflated, and they just kept right. feeding the beast, and they just were printing money because right. they knew that their models were broken. That is artificial intelligence done wrong. And um, when you have people knowing when when Open Door or Zillow or Redfin or OfferPad is the sucker at the poker room, they all go in for the kill. And all about yeah. all these all these wholesalers were just laughing as yeah. they were overpaying for property. So that's it's AI done wrong, uh, residential yeah. uh, flipping. That's not good. you know. It's interesting. I read an article last week, and I I wish I could find what I put my hands on it, but it's about ninety percent of value that I buyers have lost in the last year. Ninety percent of value, which is incredible. It's incredible, you know, to lose that much money. So. You know, my thought is, okay, where where are the markets that these I buyers were? Those are the housing markets and the neighborhoods where values are going to tank because they're going to have to dump them, right? So mm -hmm. I might, if I've got a little extra money and I've got a little, you know, I can kind of see where values maybe go over the long term. I might go in and try to scoop up some of those things. Now I got to be able to weather values coming down a little bit, but if you can buy right and time it right and buy some, you know, buy up some rentals that they were going to hold buy a much cheaper and then ride up the boom, you you may do okay there. Yeah, I buyers will be banks. And what do I mean by that? I got used to buying from banks last time. They're non-emotional. All you got to do is figure right. out their little rules. And uh, it was awesome. Yeah. And and I have students already buying from I buyers. They figured out that 60 days on market is the first hurdle. Um, so if you can go into a market, find out an I buyer, see 60 days on market, write a stupid offer, see what happens. And what's the LTV they're letting them go at, right? So that's what we had to find out with banks in the last major recession is, you know, are they going to let them go at 82% of what they think the value is after 60 days? And and what does that percentage drop to? Do you have any data on that yet? So I only have a few examples, five or six to this point. All of them have got it for less than 80% of list price. Now, I don't know values because those aren't my buy boxes. Sure. Uh, but that's 20% off. And it, the other thing I got from uh, Ryan Lundquist, Sacramento appraiser on Twitter, I think, uh, he knows Sacramento. Again, not my buy box, but I'm just fascinated by this stuff. Open door, active listings as of Monday, 73% of open doors active listings were listed below their purchase price. Wow. <laughs> that's not good. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> not, not good, good for them. <laughs> not not good. Not good. Well, not good for Sacramento, right? That's that. Right. Those, those cups are going to go the wrong way. So yeah, I I put a note out on Twitter. Follow me one rental at a time, saying these are the three housing markets that are characteristics of housing markets that will have the crash that everybody wants. Number one, I buyer dominated. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it's going to be fun. So folks, go learn your market, your buy box. If you have I buyers, uh, time to get greedy. Time to write some stupid low offers. Absolutely. And that's the key. Don't be greedy and buy them at what they're asking for, right? You, you got to get them for stupid prices. And when they're motivated, they you might this oh, is, they will. I, you might get that good opportunity. Yeah, they're they're gonna be non-emotional. I I again, there's somebody in a spreadsheet in Seattle somewhere that has no idea what this house in Arizona is. It's just row number 17, and it's been on the spreadsheet for 93 days. It's gotta go. I mean, it's right. just a non-emotional decision. So uh, Anna, where can people follow you? Great. You can find me on social media at Anna Kelly, REI mom. You can find me on the show every Wednesday and on my playlist. And you can find me at my website at REImom.com. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful Thank week. You. you too. All right.